found He is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand On flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the ground. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Friends, welcome to Crooked Branches Ministry. I am Colwyn Dunlap, the founder and pastor here at Crooked Branches, and we have a very, 
very special and very momentous occasion today. Not only that it's Easter, but that we celebrate with friends and believers from Scotland. Uh, the beginning of this, you saw a band out of Scot out of Glasgow, Scotland, called Celtic Worship. Here's a little bit about them. A collective of some of Scotland's most talented folk musicians, Celtic Worship is a Scottish music worship ministry which blends traditional and contemporary Christian worship music with the powerful sound of bagpipes, whistles, and fiddle. Their mission is to combine their working life as professional musicians with their deep love of Jesus and their passion to share God's love through their music. Now, the way I discovered them was because I wanted very special music for our Easter celebration. I went on YouTube and I started looking for just good worship music in general that was, you know, royalty-free. And while I was doing that, in my recommended, I just saw the word Celtic worship, or the words Celtic worship. And I clicked on it, and it was that song, and I listened to it, and the Holy Spirit moved me to contact them. So I found their website, and I sent them an email. The next day, Scott, who is the piper and whistler, uh, got back to me saying that they would be very honored, and it was their pleasure for me to share their music for our celebrations. So I will be featuring three of their songs on here today. I would also like to take a chance to thank them for allowing me to do this. I love Celtic music. I love my Celtic roots. And it made my Easter very special and very blessed. I am very thrilled to share this music with anyone that watches and hears our worship today. Thanks, guys. I must apologize for what happened with Holy Week this, these last few days. Um, the, the cell towers and even the rest of the, the town I'm in has been hit weirdly by internet glitches and things like that. Um, I tried uploading the Maundy Thursday video four different times, and every time it said it was uploaded, it wasn't actually uploaded, and because of that, I didn't actually do a Good Friday recording, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the recordings that I made of the Passion Stories, all four of them, and I'm going to read the remainder of each gospel in accordance with the, what they say there and I'm going to explain why they are different in in the ways that they're different and why they are different the the uh, the importance and the significance behind it because each of them need to be different and I'm going to be doing that throughout the week I'm going to try and please pray that I can get this done to do Mark or have Mark uploaded by Monday, Matthew uploaded by Wednesday, uh, Luke uploaded by Friday, and then the following Monday have John uploaded because on Sunday I'm starting another series. On Sunday I actually decided to push the James to Sunday, to, to next Sunday. And it's going to be a series. It's probably going to be a series that leads us up to Pentecost. I'm going to be doing readings from Acts as well as James and uh, throughout the, for gospel purposes. Um, they're going to be kind of taking the place of the gospel readings for our lessons. That wraps up our, our announcements. So let's begin our services with prayer. Father, we thank you for your Son. We thank you for your love. 
We thank you for his love, his teachings, his sacrifice, and his gift to us in being with you when we are called home. We love you. We love each other. We serve you. We serve each other. We do all of these in the name and in the honor of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first scripture comes from the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. Our next gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Spirit of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Friends, it is with a very happy heart that I now offer you some beautiful music performed as our anthem Be Thou My Vision by Celtic Worship Be Thou My Vision O Lord of My Heart Not 
be all else to me save that thou art thou my best thought by day or by night waking or sleeping thy presence my life Thou my wisdom and thou my true word I ever with thee and thou with me Lord Thou my great Father and I thy true Son Thou in me dwelling and I I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, thou and always. Thou and thou only, the first in my heart. High King of heaven, my treasure thou Friends, let us pray. Father, we thank you again 
for Jesus. We thank you for your love. We ask that you be our vision, that we see the world as you would have us see the world. For it was you that created it, it was you that loved it, and it was you that will ultimately save it in the end. We ask for you to deliver us from any strife that we may be facing, from any hardship or illness that we may be feeling. For those of us struggling at work or at school, please embolden our will and wisen our intellect that it may reflect your will. We ask that you pull us into safety and into providence away from the wicked pandemic that is happening right now. There are those of us that need you more than ever. And there are those of us that have never sought you that will be seeking you. We know and we pray that you will save them if they sincerely ask. We pray in the name and in the honor of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our third gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24 verses 1 through 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still with you in Galilee, The Son of Man will be, must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day to be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these to these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them, who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself, what had happened. Our fourth and final gospel reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 9. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. 
Father, let my words be your words. Let my words be guided by the Holy Spirit that they may reveal your love and reveal the service and the sacrifice that your Son gave for all of us. I pray in the name and in the honor of Jesus Christ. Amen. As a kid, a teenager, eventually an undergrad, I always wondered why we focused so much on Easter. You know, it was like we just celebrated the the death of our Savior. Why are we celebrating that? And then all of a sudden, wait a minute, it clicked. And I was probably 17, it clicked. We're not really celebrating his death, we're celebrating his resurrection on Easter. Holy Week celebrates and, and honors his death. Yes, by all means, yes, we should actually keep doing that. Easter itself celebrates new life. It celebrates renewal. And since Jesus' kingdom is not of our world, we are to take the gifts of Easter that are given to us and share them with the world. Well, what are the gifts of Easter? They are the fulfillment of the law, of the prophets, of the Psalms, and the celebration that the final Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Those are the presents, you know, wrapped in their, in their beautiful purple, pink, green, all different colors, all these bright, beautiful colors, that when we unwrap them, they actually, truly represent love, patience, compassion, empathy, repentance, forgiveness, and the willingness to sacrifice ourselves for our friends. Because you see, there is no greater love than to sacrifice yourself for your friends. You can look that up in the Gospel of John. It was out of love that Jesus sacrificed himself for us as the final Passover lamb, as the final sacrificial life to forgive us of our sins. That very act in itself was a violent, traumatizing, I'm sure, act for those that loved, that learned, that ate, and lived with Jesus. And it was life-changing for them, for everyone that knew him and believed in him then. I'm sure it was devastating. But, ultimately, they would have been reminded that that had to happen. He had to be sacrificed for their sake, for our sake. He had to give up everything that he, that he worked for that he lived for, for us. He had to give up his family. He had to give up his friends. 
a ministry that he had started and had been working on for about four years at the time, traveling the region and preaching. But because his teachings were dangerous to those in power, he had to be removed. I'll explain more of that later on in the next series that we were, that, that I talked about earlier on in the in the in the introduction and in the announcements. Jesus emptied himself out for us. And it's not to say that he expects us to do the same thing. But if we are forced to do it, we should not be afraid. Because ultimately, while Jesus feared what was happening, he was afraid of what was about to happen to him. He did not let fear consume him. He let his faith consume him. What we have to understand about our faith is that we live it. It is not something that we just kind of do on a Sunday. If you do that, you might ought to reconsider what you're doing with your life. Whether or not you're actually cut out for a... Christian belief system for a Christian life because yes his yoke may be light and you can put everything on him but you still have responsibilities to others and ultimately to God that you have to do that you have to follow through on Jesus taught us to rule but not as... We, Jesus taught us to be royal. Let me put it to you that way. Jesus taught us to be royal. Maybe noble is the, is the better word that I should use here. Jesus taught us to be noble. Not as rulers, but as servants. Because Jesus ruled. But he did not rule and does not rule as rulers that we would know that we would that where that we have experienced not even the most great and almighty king ruled the same way he did and does we must understand that by his his stripes as the term goes by his stripes our sins are forgiven but that our sins are also on us and that it is also our duty to forgive those that may sin against us. As we say in the, in the Lord's Prayer, you know, you use debts and debtors like I do, like, you know, as I said, as I said before, I was raised Presbyterian, so that's the way, and that's the way that we say it. Others use trespass and trespass against us Others use sin and sin against us, you know, things like that. That is ultimately an act of repentance and an act of forgiveness. In order to receive Jesus, you have to be able to forgive. But you also have to be able to acknowledge your wrongdoing. You know, another another gospel story would be the whole let he use without sin cast a first stone. And all of the all of the men there dropped their stones when they were about to stone a woman. Simply because Jesus said, Hey, are you perfect? Do you have do you have sin 
or have you sinned? I'm sure that if the tables were turned, each and every one of you is worthy of, sin, of, of being stoned. Jesus takes the place of all of that. Jesus fulfilled that part of the law. He fulfilled all of the law. And since he defeated the cross, ultimately, fulfilling the law, the prophets, the Psalms, the entirety of the Old Testament, quote-unquote the Old Testament, he proved to have power over death and over its condemnation. Because, see, for... for ancient Jews, and I even think it's somewhat now, they don't have, they don't have anywhere like heaven promised to them as we do. Jesus opens up heaven for us. But in order to go there, we must embrace him. And by embracing him, we must do as he did. That's not, a, that's not an easy life. That's actually a rather hard life, especially nowadays. Because, see, nowadays, we are so caught up in our money, in our jobs that often don't let us worship or practice the way that we would like to practice our faith. And we have to do it in secret, which is not a bad thing. In fact, it's biblical that we would have to do it in secret, that we will have to do it away from people and there's nothing wrong with that because ultimately Jesus's kingdom is not of this world but what we do here even in secret especially in secret we can prepare for Jesus to return with his kingdom I'm not saying to look for it. I'm not saying to try and cause Jesus' return. Don't mince my words on that one. What I am saying is in every aspect of your life, if you live in love, if you live in patience, compassion, empathy, all of the gifts of Easter that I just told you about, by living that life, you will make Jesus' coming all the more easier for those who look for it and for those that will embrace it. And I'm not saying to, to belittle or, or harm those that don't want you or don't want to embrace the kingdom that you are trying to build. To embrace the world that you are trying to build. That's not the way that we're supposed to do things. We leave that for Jesus. We leave that for God. What we do is we embrace our neighbors. We love them as we love ourselves. We can talk about what Jesus means to us. We can show them with our love what Jesus means to us. 
because that is how they will know us. They will not know us from our judgmental nature. That is the way of the Pharisees. They will not know us by the doctrine that we, that we practice on Sundays, on Wednesdays, whenever we walk into a temple or a church. That is the way of the Pharisees. They will know us by our love. They will know us because the love of Jesus Christ is shared with us all. The gift that he gives every year on Easter is a new life that we live and renew every Easter Sunday because he reminds us that we are his and he is ours. He paid our debts. We have no guilt in life. We have no fear in death. Because Jesus paid it all. Amen. Friends, if you have been following this series, then you know that I do say the Lord's Prayer differently. I have explained it to you in the past, um, but if you are uncomfortable with the way that I say it, feel free to say it however you are called to say it. Don't take my belief as yours if you don't want to. If you choose to, to follow it, that's fine if you choose not to. I'm not going to judge you for it. I'm not going to persecute you for it. Because your faith is your faith. And with that being said, I haven't been using a creed because I just haven't really decided which creed I would like to use. I've been praying about it, whether or not to use the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, or anything like that. If you are on the Facebook group, then you know that I have been considering using a creed called the Creed of the Beloved. It was divinely inspired and written by Reverend Bobby Schuler, now of the Hour of Power. And I would like to incorporate that creed into Crooked Branch's mission, into our belief structure. So please... Read along with me. The Creed of the Beloved. I'm not what I do. I'm not what I have. I'm not what people say about me. I am the Beloved of God. It's who I am. No one can take it from me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I can trust my friend Jesus and share his love with the world. Now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us in the Gospel of Matthew. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, 
our faith is built as a gift. Our lives are a gift. Even our humanity and our imperfections are a gift. We can give these imperfections to others. We can show them where our mistakes are. We can show them why those mistakes were made. We can explain them to them. And we can also explain why we should not continue to do them. Doing that is called repentance. And when someone comes forward that has wronged you and seeks forgiveness of that wrong, you should grant it to them. It may take time. It may be difficult. And you may have to do it several times because sometimes sins are not easily forgiven. Let us confess our imperfections to God. Let us bring them to Him so that they may be forgiven. Let us pray. Father, You made us to be imperfect. You made us in Your image but you gave us the will to do our own thing. Sometimes we make decisions or we act against others and against your will. Father, we ask for your help. Show us the way that we should follow. You have shown us the way to live through Christ. We ask that you and the Holy Spirit work in us to better build your creation. Amen. Friends, living in Christ we are allowed to love freely, to love openly, to love everyone. We are encouraged to do all of those. Because, friends, in Jesus Christ, His love forgives us of our hatred, of our transgressions, and of our sins. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. I'm not going to give a proper benediction for the end of this service. Instead, I'm going to hand the benediction over once again to Celtic worship because Jesus paid it all. Small 
child of weakness, watch and pray, find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Still repeat. 
dead Oh, praise the one who paid my debt And raised this life up from the dead